Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to keep it simple and we're going to go back to basics. We're going to look at how to start a keto or carnivore lifestyle in case you are someone who has not started or is considering doing that or maybe you're keto and you want to go carnivore. Some tips and tricks for doing that. And if you've been in this space for a little while and you are keto or carnivore, also take a look at how to keep things simple and stop complicating things. Sometimes we find ourselves getting into a rut. We don't know what's really wrong. We can't figure it out. We're trying so many things and none of them seem to be working. What do we do? So let's talk about that in just a minute. With every star, we are born again. Open your heart. Spend this time in your head. So let's talk about how to start a keto or a carnivore journey. Now I say journey because I don't really think that it's a diet. It's not just a way of eating. Generally, when you start, it can just be about the weight or it can just be about the size. But the more you learn and the more you experience, you're going to find out that there's a lot more to it than just how much you weigh or what size you wear. You're going to discover that health is actually the main goal and health is not always best indicated by weight. Yes, generally speaking, once you achieve health, weight loss will be a happy byproduct of getting healthy, not the other way around. Most people think that in order to be healthy, I have to lose weight. Well, guess what? There's a lot of people in this world who are extremely underweight and they are not healthy. There's also people in this world who are what Ivor Cummins and the Irish Heart Disease Association called TOFIs, thin on the outside, but fat on the inside. This means that just because you don't show the outward symptoms of being unhealthy, it doesn't mean that you can't develop something like diabetes or heart disease. There are other things that contribute to your health besides just your size. So let's take a look at what you would want to do if you wanted to start a keto or a carnivore lifestyle. Well, it depends. Everybody is different. For some people, they're going to jump in and start. One day they were standard American diet, the next day they were carnivore and they will never look back. But there's other people who need to take it a little bit slower. They can't do the cold turkey, rip off the band-aid and move on with life. For those people, sometimes it's going to take a little while. You can transition slowly. You need to know what kind of a person you are. If you come from a background with an eating disorder, sometimes it's better to just jump straight in, deal with the side effects and the keto flu that come with it because getting rid of those triggers is more important than minimizing some of the other side effects. But really, it's completely up to you. If you wanna take the slow and steady approach, then what I would suggest is for two weeks, I want you to go ahead and eat most of the stuff in your house that doesn't apply to keto and carnivore. Now, I understand that some of us live with other people and they don't all eat the same way. So what you can do for yourself is create a space in your cupboard, in your fridge, even in your freezer, where only your foods go. That way, when you go to get something from your area, Area, you're not triggered by a lot of the other things that are in there. And I would suggest yours be in the fridge, say on a shelf where you can reach in easily grab and go. And the more triggering things are tucked away into a drawer so that they aren't tempting when you open up the fridge every single time, if it's possible. So for you, you would want to get rid of everything that's going to be a mega temptation for you personally. You're going to take two weeks, you can donate it, you can eat it, you can throw it away. There's all kinds of different ways you can get rid of it depending on what you wanna do and what your circumstances are. If you're gonna go keto, in those two weeks, I would suggest that you get familiar with a tracking app. I like Carb Manager and I've actually done a video on how to track with Carb Manager. I will link that above in case you wanna check that out. I strongly suggest that if you're going to be keto, you get familiar with this app and how it works. What I want you to do, I don't want you to change your diet at all in these first two weeks while you're clearing everything out. 
I want you to get familiar and comfortable with putting your food into Carb Manager. I want you to see where your carbs are hiding because most people do not know where those carbs are actually hiding. While you're doing this, there's no judgment. You're just getting a baseline to see where you're coming from. So you know where carbs are and how to avoid them when you begin to implement your diet. Two weeks seems to be a pretty good round number for people to be able to clear out their pantries, go through everything that they are probably going to be tempted by and want to get rid of, and be able to replenish with healthier options. So what you're gonna do is when you run out of something, you're gonna replace it with a keto or a better option. Now, when you run out of bread, I'd really rather you not replace it with a keto bread from the store. Those are a lot of the keto products that the internet keto would recommend that you do. I do not like a lot of those keto products. I would much rather you start making your own food. If that means that you need to invest in some of the egg white powder to start making the PSMF bread, that is a far superior option to anything that you are going to find in the store. If you're going to be keto, I also encourage you to limit the use of almond flour because that, oh my goodness, that is a slippery slope that many people can end up getting stuck on. The almond flour makes amazing things, but what you don't realize is that it actually has quite a few carbs in it along with fat. Fat and carbs together are what we want to avoid. We want to pick one fuel source, not mix the two. So finding a better option for what you are going to replace it with. When you run out of ketchup, replace it with a better ketchup. Same thing with your mayonnaise. One thing to keep in mind when you're doing keto is the main things you're gonna wanna get rid of are grains of all kinds, seed oils of all kinds. Those include vegetable, canola, safflower, sunflower, rapeseed, grapeseed. All of those need to go. Those are extremely inflammatory. You're going to replace them with things like avocado oil, olive oil, and coconut oil. Now, I would highly recommend, even if you're keto, that you prioritize animal fats over plant fats. So butter, tallow, bacon grease, lard, ghee, egg yolks, and dairy, if you're using it, would be far superior to olive oil, coconut oil, and avocado oil. Finding what works for you at this time is also very important. So if you want to start with olive oil and coconut oil, go ahead and do it. You can transition over to the animal fats later on. So you're going to avoid grains, you are going to avoid the seed oils, and then you are going to avoid all sugar. Now, when I say all sugar, most people think table sugar. However, sugar comes in a lot of other forms, including pasta, cereal, crackers, waffles. All of those grains that we were talking about do in fact convert into sugar, as does honey and fruit. There's a lot of people in this space right now, especially some hyper carnivores who enjoy Enjoy meat and fruit. If you have things to heal like type 2 diabetes, metabolic disorders, depression, anxiety, I highly, highly recommend that you ditch the fruit for now. It doesn't necessarily have to be forever. You may find that you're able to get rid of it for a time and then come back to it later on down the road. But when there's healing to do, we really want to give our body the best opportunity to do that. That means you got to put the inflammatory carbs aside, even if they are natural and organic. They're still carbs and they do still cause inflammation. So let's give your body a chance to heal the best that it can. So now we've gotten rid of grains, we have gotten rid of seed oils, and we have gotten rid of all of the sugar. After that, I want you to really focus on meat and fat. Now, when I first went keto, I focused on the plants because I thought that leafy greens were where it was at and that is how we got our nutrition. However, that's not really the case. Our nutrition actually comes from animal products, meat and fat specifically. There's a lot of people who are afraid of protein. Protein is your building blocks. You're made out of an awful lot of protein. Don't be afraid of it. You need to make sure that you get enough of it every day for your body to repair, replace, and replenish all of your cells. Same thing with fat. 
you can either run on fat or you can run on carbs. If carbs are inflammatory and we're getting rid of them, you have to replace your fuel source with something. Protein is not a fuel source. And yes, some people find that they are able to access the fat on their bodies to burn that for fuel. However, you need to keep in mind that the fat stored on your body actually stores toxins in it as well. So while you are burning your fat for energy, you're also releasing all of those toxins. And many people find that they feel absolutely horrible when they do not provide enough fat or fuel for their body. Plus, your body has to learn how to burn fat. How does it do that? If you provide good fat, then it makes it much easier for your body to use that as fuel while you are making new mitochondria that know how to burn fat as fuel. It's a little bit of a process and usually people experience some kind of keto flu in the beginning. Electrolytes can help immensely with that. Keep in mind that when you are eating a standard American diet, we eat an awful lot of carbs. Carbohydrates, hydrate, Carbs hang on to water. When we stop consuming as many carbs, we're gonna lose the water. Well, that's great, right? Water weight, there's a problem. Electrolytes, which are needed for the electrical signaling in our body, are held in the water. So when we lose the water, we also lose our electrolytes. That's why it's so important for people who are keto or carnivore to make sure that they get enough salt every day because salt is actually our electrolytes. I wanna caution you though, do not use the Umbrella Girl salt. I know, the stuff we grew up with, iodized salt, because iodine is so important, right? Unfortunately, the iodine in that salt is probably all sublimated anyways, if it's anything over six months after processing it. And if you look at the back of the package, you'll see that either dextrose or multodextrin has been added to the salt. Guess what? That's sugar. So completely going against what we're trying to do here. I recommend that you use Redmond's Real Salt if you are in the United States. The reason I recommend that is because they are located in Utah and they mine their salt from an ancient underground seabed. There's no toxins, no microplastics, nothing in there. It was underneath layers of clay, which have helped keep a lot of the chemicals and pollution out. Redmond's Real Salt is incredible. Some people say it tastes a little gritty and sandy, but that's because of all of the micronutrients that are found in the salt itself. If you live elsewhere in the world, look for a local above ground dried up mine of salt that is in your area. We would think that sea salt would be really healthy, but in fact, it's full of pollutants from the ocean, from oil spills, from all kinds of things, microplastics floating around in the water. So making sure that you have an excellent quality salt is imperative. There's also electrolyte drinks that you can try as well. There are many brands and many flavors with or without sweeteners. Now, for those who want to go carnivore, a lot of what I said applies to you too. You can start all at once or you can go slowly. Some people who want to go carnivore find that they need to go slowly because they've been consuming a high oxalate diet. What are oxalates? Oxalates are teeny tiny little crystalline structures found in certain plants. They're very highly concentrated in spinach, almonds, potatoes, sweet potatoes, Swiss chard, and more. So the more of those foods you are currently eating, the slower you might want to go to transition over to carnivore. Oxalates build up in our bodies until we stop eating them. When we stop eating them, because they are a toxic substance, our bodies will begin shoving them out as fast as it can because it wants to get rid of this toxic substance. Well, for some people that can create quite a problem. It'll start coming out in your eyes as styes and the little crusties in the corners of your eyes when you wake up. It'll come out of your skin, on your back, on your hands, sometimes the bottom of your feet. For some people, they get extremely unlucky and it ends up coming out in the form of kidney stones like my husband. So taking a look at what you are currently eating may help you decide how fast you wanna make the transition. When you go carnivore, you don't really have to track as much as you really should on keto because you're not consuming foods with carbs in them. Well, not the conventional carbs that we're attempting to avoid. Eggs, liver, and seafood all do have carbs in them, but carbs from animals are different than carbs from plants. I don't tend to worry too much about those. But a lot of people say, oh yeah, I'm zero carb, I eat liver and eggs. In a way, they are right. 
Yes, there are carbs in eggs, but because they are in an animal, it's a little bit easier for our bodies to handle. And unless you're eating several pounds of liver and a couple dozen eggs, it's not going to amount to much anyways. So what you're going to do is you are going to, after these two weeks, if you're taking the slow route or on the next day, whenever you're ready to start, you are going to have your first meal, be it keto or carnivore. Now, if it's carnivore, it's pretty simple. You're going to eat things from the animal kingdom. You can have muscle meats. You can have eggs. You can have dairy to an extent. Don't overdo the dairy. Or you can have organs as well. As much as you want when you first begin. Now, that goes for keto as well as long as we're talking about the animal products. Please do not go fill up on all of your vegetables and then think about your meat afterwards. That is exactly what I did and what Richard did when we started our journey and we thoroughly regret it. I lost over half of my hair because I didn't prioritize protein thinking that the plants were where all of my nutrition was going to come from. Little did I know, all we ended up doing was poisoning ourselves with more oxalates than we had been consuming on standard American diet. And we had to deal with the fallout and are still dealing with the fallout, literally, to this day. So be very intentional about what and how you're going to eat. But what I want you to do for those first couple of weeks, don't worry about the frequency of your food. If you're hungry, eat. Eat some meat. Eat some meat and fat. And then if you're keto, go ahead and add some veg afterwards. Don't worry about sticking to three meals a day. If you want a snack too, go ahead and have a snack. What I'm hoping you'll find is that the longer you go on and do this, you're not going to need those snacks anymore. You're going to go from three meals a day with two snacks to two meals a day and two snacks, or maybe drop the snacks first. You're going to learn what your hunger cues are actually telling you. When you're actually hungry, you can eat. Now, sometimes we think we're hungry because it's 10 o'clock and it should be snack time. You can use a little tool called the hunger scale. How hungry are you really? If you look at a pile of bacon and you go, yeah, that's not really what I want, you're not really hungry. But if you can look at a pile of bacon and go, oh, I could pound half of that down, then do it. It's time to eat. When you come to this way of eating and this way of living, most people are very nutrient deficient up to this point. Even if you've been overeating carbs or plants, you're nutrient deficient. People who are underweight and overweight have this problem. You are not giving it enough nutrients. Once you start focusing on protein and fat from animal sources, your body is going to soak it up like a sponge and it is going to be very grateful and very hungry all at the same time. Don't withhold anything when you first begin. Then several weeks down the road, hopefully your hunger signals will have begun to get a little bit clearer and you will know when you're truly hungry and when you're not. You also do not need to force yourself to eat. If you're not hungry, then don't eat. That is your body learning how to burn its own fat for fuel. And if you've eaten enough protein since the beginning of your journey, then you don't have to keep refilling. It will let you know when it needs more and when it's not so hungry anymore. The only thing you need to be careful of is under eating. I too am guilty of that. I still have to track three and a half years into my journey to be sure that I'm getting enough. My hunger hormones, leptin and ghrelin, are pretty screwed up from my previous ways of eating. So what does that mean? I have to be very careful not to under eat on a consistent basis. If you wanted to eat less some days and more other days, that is okay because throughout the week, you're gonna have a pretty good average. If you wanna start intermittent fasting or even longer term fasting, that is something you can absolutely look at doing. Just make sure that when you are eating, you are getting adequate nutrition. What will happen if you don't do that is that your metabolic rate will slow down because you're not providing it with enough calories. So whether you are keto or whether you are carnivore, you are going to want to make sure that you are focusing on meat and fat from the animal kingdom and following up with some veg afterwards. If you're going to do keto sweeteners or fat bombs, things like that, then make sure that they really are still a treat and after you have had adequate nutrition 
from your protein. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's actually really simple once you break it down and you look at it. This is a journey. What works now may not work in three or six months or maybe even a year. You just have to kind of wait and see where your body's going to feel the best. You can look at things like changing your macros, higher protein, higher fat, but again, that's kind of down the road. When you're first starting out, most of the time when people are doing keto, they shoot for 70% fat, 20% protein, and the remainder is carbs. I implore you to make sure that you are getting enough protein. The goal for protein when you are on keto should be one gram of protein to every lean pound of body mass. So what does that mean? I, at five foot eight, weigh about 160 pounds right now. But my lean body mass, if I calculate it, if I go online to a lean body mass calculator, is about 113 pounds. Now that's just my muscle, my bone, and my organs. What that means is that I shoot for about 113 grams of protein every single day because that is a really good minimum. That's a really good baseline to go for. Sometimes I don't quite make it and some days I make it over. Some people find that they do better with a lot more protein. Other people can't handle that much. Where you're gonna fall is really up for you to figure out. When it comes to carnivore, you're gonna try to shoot for one-to-one -one fat to protein macros. Unfortunately, the only way you're gonna know what that looks like is if you actually plug it into a tracking app. Ribeyes are really good one-to-one -one protein to fat. Eggs are also excellent as well. Bacon, another really good source of one-to-one -one fat to protein. That means one gram of fat is going to be equal to one gram of protein. They're about the same. Now the caloric intake is going to look a little bit different because fat has more calories per gram than protein does, but that's okay. Don't worry about that. One to one protein and fat is a great place to start. So now at this point in time, you get to choose how you are going to start. Now, to speak to everyone who's been here for a little while, who already knows this, who's been through this and has already done it. A lot of this applies to you too, because sometimes in this space, we get bogged down by trying too many things, listening to too many people and adding too many experiments to what we're doing. Sometimes we too need to get back to basics. Just go back, go back to the beginning. Take a look at what you did in the beginning of your journey. Try to see if you can figure out what really worked and what maybe didn't work so well. Try to re-implement some of those things see what happens. Sometimes we overcomplicate things and we think, oh, it's gonna be better to do it this way. The grass is always greener on the other side. So we change something and then we change something else. And then we change something else. And all of a sudden we're in a place that doesn't work anymore, but we don't know what isn't working. Sometimes it works to go back. Go back to where you were. Go back to the last place that you remember that was working. It's exactly what Richard and I did. And it's what we needed to get back on track because now things are working again. We stopped listening to, oh, try this. Oh, you have to have this. Oh, maybe you should try some carbs. Yeah, I tried the honey and the fruit thing. It did not go well. So everybody is in a different place in their journey. Whether you're brand new, just starting, haven't even started yet, or you are a veteran, it's always a good thing to get back to basics. Look at what we know to be true, what you find to be true for you. Stick with that. Sometimes we have to quiet down all the noise and just listen, get some feedback from our bodies and move forward from there. I hope this helps any newbies out there to know how you should begin a keto or carnivore way of life or journey. I hope that all the veterans out there are able to reach out and help all of the newbies who are just getting ready to get started and give them some advice. Please post your questions down below. And if you've been doing this for a while, let people know what's been working for you. I'll chime in too every time I get the chance. Just remember that this is your journey. Don't get sucked into someone else's and don't let them control yours either. Enjoy your journey. We don't always end up with the results that we want, 
but we always end up with some kind of a result. We can learn from everything. Thanks so much guys for checking in today. I hope that this encourages you. And if you need help figuring out further than this, what you need to do, and you want some one-on-one -on -one support or a community support, please check out the Mighty Network down below because that is a place that I can really help you go deeper and we can look at your macros, we can work on setting them and you can get even more education on what might be best for you. So that link is down below. Thanks again. We'll see you on the way. I hope that, I hope nothing. I hope nothing. No, it's okay. What's the word? And pollution. Now that does not mean that you have to continue eating uh, the, not, hmm. One pound, no. It's, a, it's about equal. It's about the same, no matter which way you look. And you, hmm, yeah. Yeah, no, it's fine. I'm just going to leave it.